Hello, worldly crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and you all have no idea how long I've been waiting for this change to come to Game Maker. So you all saw the title of the video. You know it's coming. Array push, the function for appending elements to an array, has uh, received a nice speed boost. Now, I can't give you an exact, like, percentage fixed value number for exactly how much array push has been sped up. Uh, for computer science reasons that we'll get to it towards the end of the video. Uh, although if you're one of the 33 people who upvoted this feature request when I submitted it almost two years ago, uh, you probably have a good idea why. Anyway, let's break this down and see what this is about. So I'm going to start out by going into a, uh, an older version of Game Maker before this change happens. So I'm going to go with 2024.11. Uh, I'm going to write some code for appending elements to an array, and then we are going to um, compare that to how it uh, looks in a modern version of Game Maker. So if I start out by saying, well, a modern, uh, one of the beta versions of Game Maker, 2024.14 uh, is when it should be officially uh, part of part of Game Maker. Anyway, I'm going to start out by initializing an array to an empty array. I'm going to repeat, uh, let's say we'll start off by repeating 10 elements and we'll array push onto the array just some random value. Don't really care what. Um, I can use uh, what I like to call the get timer trick. Uh, before and after uh, the code that I want to test, and that will return a, a device timestamp for uh, exactly when this code ran, uh, the number of microseconds since the game has started, so one millionth of a second, and I can show a debug message um, appending 10 elements to an array took and we can say uh, t2 minus t divided by 1,000 to turn that from microseconds into milliseconds. And we can run this, and we can see how long this takes. Uh, let me also toss a game end at the bottom of this so that we don't actually have to see the window. Uh, if I look in the console, we can see that appending 10 elements to an array took about 0.1 milliseconds, so hey. uh, 10 microseconds. Now, if I were to do this again, uh, let me... I really could make this like a function call if I wanted to do this the proper way, but I'm just going to copy and paste the code a couple of times. Um, We're going to do this a few more times. I'll run several tests back to back. Uh, first, we can do 100, 100 elements. Uh, then I'm going to jump it up to uh, 10,000 elements uh, because I um, we're going to see how the scales better at larger intervals. And I think then we'll jump up to 100 I need a, an underscore there, 100,000 elements. Um, and I believe these were the numbers that I used when I was uh, testing this for the for the feature request thread. But um, let's see, everything look okay here. So let's run this. And we are going to see how long this takes. And you'll, uh, you'll note that it's taken considerably longer uh, than it was uh, the first time I ran this. All right. So adding 10 elements took uh, 0.1 milliseconds, adding 100 elements took 0.3. Uh, 10,000 elements was a considerable jump. That took 11 milliseconds. And 100,000 100, elements um, took um, 8 seconds, so 8,000 milliseconds. And this deviates a little bit from what you might naively expect a, um, a function like this to scale with. So you might expect if this took 0.01 milliseconds, you might expect uh, if you bump that up by 10 it to take... Uh, 0.1 milliseconds if you bump it up to 100,000. Uh, so 100 times this, uh, you might expect, um, say, uh, two place values over. And up to this point, this is about what you see, right? But if you go farther than that, um, if you uh, increase the number of iterations by another 10 times, you might, again, naively expect this to take uh, 100 milliseconds, and that is not at all what we see. So a rate push scales badly to large... Um, to large array sizes, and again, we'll get to why that is later. Uh, but first, uh, let me just copy all this. I'm going to go into a Game Maker project in uh, whatever this current beta number is, 2024.14, um, um, or 2025 LTS, and we'll just run this again. And right off the bat, that was much faster. So on the bottom end, uh, it shows us something that's more or less what we saw before. But on the high end, it um, it almost defies expectations. So if you're just pushing 10 elements onto an array, it took about as long as it did before within like Game Maker's ability to measure time. If you're appending 100 elements to an array, it's still it's still fast. 
three one hundredths of a millisecond versus one one hundredth of a millisecond doesn't really anything to lose sleep over. Uh, by ten thousand elements, you're starting to see a notice, noticeable difference. So uh, eleven milliseconds versus one and a third, and a uh, hundred thousand elements. Uh, let me just open the Windows calculator and we can figure out how much faster that is. So what was it? Eighty three. Um, 8,300 uh, versus like 4.2 is uh, almost 2,000 times faster uh, for 100,000 elements. And the reason that this, uh, that this scales, so this isn't just a matter of like a constant time speed up, like it may be a more efficient way to access memory or uh, something like that, like you might expect uh, when other functions in Game Maker see optimizations. Uh, this is um, a, an entirely different way of handling memory internally. And um, some of us have been asking uh, this from GameMaker for a long time now, but unfortunately this was tied up in a bunch of weird legacy behaviors of arrays, which meant that uh, other things had to be dealt with before GameMaker could, uh, could address it properly. But nonetheless, uh, this is now the behavior in uh, 2024.14 and uh, whenever 2025 LTS comes out. So now let me whip out some graph paper and explain why this is faster. So if you have an array in memory and they're Arrays are going to be commonly um, illustrated by something like a, uh, if you have a strip of memory like this, if you have an array that's four elements long, uh, you'll say you have uh, four cells in this strip of memory. Um, let's just assign them values or something like that. So this is your array of four elements. And then the, the memory that follows the array in like physical address space uh, or virtual address space, whatever the case may be, that's going to that's gonna belong to some other part of the same program or maybe even some other program. You, you don't want to touch that uh, lest your uh, computer blue screen if you try to uh, write a value to some place where you, where you don't belong. And if you, uh, if you have an array like this, uh, this is called memory tight, so there's no extra space on the end. Uh, if you want to append an element to it, you're going to have to uh, ask the operating system to give you a uh, new strip of memory, uh, which has... Uh, five elements, uh, five uh, or enough space for five elements. So we'll say something like this. Uh, you're going to have to uh, claim that strip of memory. You're going to have to copy each and every one of the values that was in the array previously to the new memory. Uh, you're going to want to write your new value to the end, and then you're just gonna you're just gonna get rid of the old one because you don't need it anymore. That one's a uh, this here is, uh, is now free space that you can use somewhere else. And um, this may or, the new array may or may not be memory tight. There may or may not be space allocated after the end of it that belongs to some other program. Uh, but you're, uh, you're not going to assume that the, if you append to an array like this, you're not going to assume that you have access to that, that space on the end. And then later on, if you want to, to, um, to push another value onto it, you're going to have to do it again. Uh, look for uh, a, a strip of memory with six. Uh, free elements. Uh, you're going to want to copy the original five, append the six value. Uh, we're still memory tight, so uh, the, the space on the end is belongs doesn't belong to us. Uh, free the original. And uh, if we do it like this, you can see how every single time you append to an array, uh, it's going to take longer and longer. Uh, so what Growable structures do, and what array push now does, and this also goes for things like uh, DS lists always worked like this, um, grow buffers always worked like this in Game Maker, uh, vertex buffers when you allocate uh, vertex buffers work like this. Uh, let's say you have your original array of uh, four elements and so as before, uh, our, uh, our array is four elements long. The, the space on the end of it doesn't belong to us. So um, as, far as, as far as we're concerned, we can't write to any value there. Uh, let's give it some, uh, some values. What you're going to do now, if you want to append a, uh, a value to the array, is instead of looking for a strip of memory with um, five uh, enough free space for five elements, uh, we are going to look for a strip of memory with enough free space for eight elements. Uh, we're going to reserve uh, we're going to reserve enough space for eight elements. Uh, we're going to copy over one, two, three, the original four. But all of this over here, 
Uh, this this empty space here still belongs to us, and we still have access to it for future use. So we can add our fifth element to uh, the, ne the next available empty block. Uh, if we want to push another value to the array again, we can just add our sixth value to the next empty block, uh, seven, eight. And if you want to append a ninth element, you would do this again, but instead of allocating nine uh, spaces, you would double this again to 16. So we have not so much improved the performance of array push by 10% or 20% or 50% uh, or anything like that. Uh, what we've really done here is we've improved the runtime complexity, as it's known, of the array push function. Uh, previously, it would have scaled linearly with the array size. So it would have been, um, if your strip of memory is completely full, like if the amount of space that you have allocated is, is completely full like this, uh, it will still be that. Uh, so the worst case would still be a, a linear uh, cost based on the array size. Uh, but the best case is just when you have free space and you can just append a, uh, a new value uh, to the uh, next available cell in memory at a, um, in a constant amount of time uh, without having to do anything else. It's independent of the array size. Uh, so that would be a big O of 1. And I want to say the average case would be uh, log n because it, um, like it's a reverse exponential. Uh, the bigger your array size is, uh, the more free space you are likely to have and the, the less frequently you're likely to... Uh, need to uh, allocate more space. And um, because uh, academics love their graphs, uh, if you were to graph uh, the amount of time that it would take to perform an array push based on the size of uh, based on the size of the array, uh, you would get something like uh, on the x-axis that you could have the size. Uh, the size of the array. On the y-axis, you could have uh, time. Uh, with the old way, if you were to graph the amount of time that any individual uh, invocation of array push took uh, versus the array size, uh, you would get something like this, a linear uh, growth. And then if you repeated that a bunch of times, it would be like n squared because math. Anyway, uh, but with the new way of doing things, you would see something that looks a lot more like this. So this is sort of a this is sort of a reverse exponential curve. This is going to be a uh, logarithmic curve. The amount of time that it takes to uh, to append to an array is going to grow very very slowly. It's only going to go up by one in this case every time you double the array size. And doing these kinds of optimizations is like the holy grail of optimizations in computer science. If you can take an algorithm uh, which scales like this or even worse, because there are algorithms that scale even worse. Um, certain sorting algorithms, and if you can improve them so that they uh, they scale like this, so that the amount of time that it takes to carry them out uh, grows very, very slowly with the, uh, with the input size, with the input data size, this is the kind of thing that we dream about at night. Anyway, that's it for array push. Uh, those of you who use this function a lot are going to be very happy, um, at least for the rest of the duration of the current runtime's lifespan. Uh, it does bear mentioning that in GMRT, uh, it already works like this. Uh, GMRT is basically a complete rewrite of the, en the engine's uh, runtime library from scratch. Hey. And as you can see, based on some of my uh, my tests when I posted this issue, um, it, it already worked like that from the beginning, so that's pretty cool. And uh, hilariously, for as, as buggy and broken as the HTML5 runner for GameMaker is, uh, it, it was just, it, its arrays functions were just wrappers for JavaScript arrays, so they already uh, presumably worked like that in most major browsers. So uh, you won't see any improvements there, but also you already had the improvements in HTML5 long before we got it on desktop. So I don't think GameMaker HTML5 users have anything to complain about. I'll also just throw out there that I don't know for certain that uh, when... Um, like you array push and game maker allocates more space for the array. If game maker does allocate a block that's double the size of the previous array, or if it allocates a block that's like 1.5x or even like bigger, like 10x or something the size of the original array. But I, I do suspect, uh, based on the uh, the timings of oh, I already, I already closed it. Uh, based on the timings of uh, the array push function, that it uh, it doubles the internal block of memory. Uh, maybe. I don't know if I'm so invested in this that I'm going to go and try and reverse engineer exactly how it works, but I'm just going to assume it's that because that's what it usually is for uh, like array lists or uh, similar data structures in, uh, in other languages. Anyway, leave it to me to go on for this long about something like this. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I like to post videos on weird stuff in Game Maker. Uh, sometimes that's important updates like this, and sometimes that's um, 
like 3D stuff or shader stuff. Uh, so if you're interested in any of this, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. And if you wanted to pledge, I definitely would appreciate it. Uh, you should all go check out Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is one of the games that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to the Steam page can be found down below. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Game Art Indie, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.